Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2020 Virtual Art Show Spotlight Interview. My name is Brooke Pudich, and I would like to welcome acrylic painter Kat Shoa and Christina Ferger. A self-taught artist, Kat Shoa is influenced by the 19th and 20th century masters and paints strongly graphic eucalyptus tree trunks inspired by her regular hikes at Franklin Canyon Park and Kenneth Hahn Park in Los Angeles. She is also a figurative, she also has a figurative series as well as portraits. She currently resides in Beverly Hills and her first art show was the Beverly Hills Art Show. We also have Christina Ferger, who is a mixed media and video artist. Her work has been shown internationally in many well-known sites and galleries and has been reviewed in prominent publications like the Smithsonian. She received her master's in fine art from Claremont University, and she currently makes and teaches fine art in Los Angeles. With that, I will turn it over to Pat and Christina. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, good to be here, and I'm excited to be interviewing Kat Shoa. Um, her art is just beautiful. If you haven't gotten a chance to look at it, I really encourage you to. And Kat, I want to ask you, um, what motivated you to choose the art medium that you are working in now? Hi, Christina, nice chatting with you. Thanks for having me here, Beverly Hills Art Show. Um, so as a self-taught artist, I really didn't have a depth of understanding of the different mediums. But I've always uh, gone to museums and galleries and looked at art and bought art, commissioned art. So I've been in the scene from a different perspective. I was following this artist in Vermont, and um, this is before I was painting. And um, I really liked the way she played with the paint. And so I just went and bought a bunch of tubes and tried to paint like she did and just turned to mud, basically. So uh, I tried to play with it. And I so, suddenly at some point something clicked with me and it started working. And that's just basically how I fell into acrylics. I've never touched oil paint. I know there's water-based oil paint. I don't know if I know what that is. I, I guess I'll, at some point I'll dab into other mediums, but I do use ink, ink pens, and I use um, oil pastels. So I use different kinds of medium, but as my major, you know, what I paint with is acrylics just because that's what I bought and that's what I started working with. As, as a self-taught artist, you're an incredible painter. And when I was looking at your art and I've been looking at it, the texture the way you uh get the texture with the paint and then you'll have areas where it's uh flatter more shape you know like and solid but the textural quality and the colors on um, your palette is just incredible and, and very sophisticated how did you get interested in art you said you've you followed arts, you went to the museums, you actually had to commission artwork for different things that you've done in your life. Um, what was your earliest memory of your interest in art? I must have been in my teens, you know, back when, mm -hmm. you know, was, you only knew about Picasso and Matisse and those guys. <laughs> You know, <laughs> and, and then I grew up. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I travel a lot. So one of the main points of, you know, one of the main things that I do when I travel is to make sure I visit local museums. Uh, I live in LA and LACMA has I've been in LACMA member on and off for many, many years, decades now. And um, so there's like a, variety of art that I've seen and grown with over over the years. I gotta say LACMA has been a great exposure to me. You know, artists like um, Gustav Kaibot, I would have never seen his work up front if it wasn't for LACMA. But also like traveling, I was in Austria, I have some family in Europe and I was visiting Austria and they said, let's go see a museum, you know, this museum. And, and I got exposed to uh, Ego Chile, which I would have, oh, you know, this is back in the nineties. 
and he wasn't well known in the U.S. And then I ended up traveling to the Czech Republic and the village where he lived. Mm -hmm. And I saw this, not a very large gallery, but a huge body of his work. And I just absolutely fell in love with his work. So it's just sort of moments like that, you know, it's just collected over time. I can't point to a specific time where the light bulbs went off. It's just, I've always been in interested. I'm very visually oriented. It's interesting because Egon Schiele was one of my, uh, my, my first drawing teacher was a huge fan of Egon. And those were some of the, when I was doing a lot of figurative work in my earlier days, that, that was who I was looking at too. Because oh he was so incredible in every way. Well, it's interesting because I can also see his influence in your work. Um, either intuitively he's sunk in or um, with the way that you, uh, especially like even in the painting behind you right now, the way the linear quality of your work and the way it flows and moves through space has a very similar or recollects that kind of um, energy that he was able to um, translate for the viewer. And that's really hard to do. Uh, that's interesting. I never thought of it that way, <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure you get influenced, you know, you just, uh, like, I look at, um, like, one of the artists that I follow closely now is Colin Davidson. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a very famous portrait artist, and I literally just zoom into the work just to see what the brush strokes look like, just to see what the colors look yeah. like, you know? And you pick it up. I mean, they just pick up. You're an artist. You know how it works, right? Yes, I do. What other careers, obviously, that you've you've been exploring art for? You said ten or twelve years. Actual painting, actually. You know, it, yeah. looks, it sounds like you've been living with art forever, which makes a huge difference. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what other career paths have you wandered down, or are wandering down, and? Do you find them compatible that, or your career compatible with your creative um, career, your art career? So I actually have a degree in computer science and engineering of all things. <laughs> I used to write software for computers, you know, to actually develop computer code. And from there, I moved into marketing and been consulting for a long, long time. So I ended up as a business strategist. Yeah, so I'm back into the IT world of all places. But one of the things, you know, I was just having a conversation over a weekend for work. And, you know, I think a lot of uh, technologists are also very creative. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and people don't realize that. I know a lot of uh, a lot of technologists who end up in uh, some sort of a creative forum. And you know, like one of the things that let's say about the colors, you know, one of the ways that I develop the colors, like this painting behind me, that blue is a mixture of a lot of colors that did not come out of the tube. I don't use any colors out of the tube. In fact. Um, Raw Sienna is my best friend. Uh, it's my most used color because I like toning everything down mm -hmm. as much as possible. And it shows in my art. But that mixture, there's also a scientific, you know, take to it, right? It's, it's creative, but it's also like, you just kind of know how to mix the colors to get a certain outcome out of it. It's not t totally creative and random. It's oh, also, really? to me, it's a little bit methodical. You know, like my whites are never white. My, I know what I'm doing with my whites, right? right. Uh, so there's, a, there's kind of that logical part of it, but you know, at some point you just kind of let the creativity go crazy to get the mixture of the result. Yeah, you do. I was, the muted palette and the way you balance the contrast, so there's visual interest, but there's still this sensitivity to palette and and the way you arrange color the way you um portray like in your both in your portraits and in your figurative work and your um eucalyptus trees i i see this this beautiful medley of uh, color do you feel that your work has an overall subject or subjects or overall themes would you talk a little bit about that and have over time, has that changed? Like, did you start one way and end up somewhere else with your subject yeah. matter? Yeah, so uh, when I start painting with those cheap paint tubes that I got <laughs> <laughs> 12 years ago, whenever it was, 
<laughs> I actually started from the most difficult um, type of painting. I start from portraits. And I would get so frustrated. I still get very frustrated, but I know now how to handle it. Because yeah. back in the day, I didn't know what to do with that frustration. Now I know that there's, I tell other newer artists, there's a phase in a certain painting where you're going to be so frustrated, you want to throw it yep. out. And I used to do that, actually. I used to just tear it apart. <laughs> I don't know how many paintings I've gotten rid of because I didn't know what to do with that frustration. Now I know you just need to go through that frustration and the end result comes through the other end. So I starting from portraiture was kind of like torturous because mm -hmm. I started painting portraits and suddenly I felt like there's, you know, bubbles popping in my brain and I went through, I didn't, you know, I had all these photos of family members and friends mm -hmm. and I would just sit there and paint and like the eyes were messed up and I would get so frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> I hike a lot locally. So um, because of the dog who would stop and, you know, do his business hiking, I stopped and looked at the tree trunks of eucalyptus trees. And I was shocked at how colorful they are. I don't know if people realize eucalyptus trees oh, are very colorful. So when, the, when the bark falls, there's blues and greens and oranges and like all kinds of colors. So I started taking pictures of them just for fun. Mm -hmm. And I, while I was doing the uh, portraits, I'm like, oh, maybe I can paint this. So I started from really, really small paintings and did the eucalyptus trees. And then that's where the um, ink pens came in because the bark wasn't really showing. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I didn't know how to do it with paint. <laughs> so I thought, I'll just use an ink pen just to show what the bark looked like. And people went crazy for, I was just posting it on Facebook for my friends. And um, I got so much feedback on it. I thought, you know, maybe there's something to this. So I started kind of delving a little bit more into it. And then the, the uh, so that's a major line and it's, you know, gets a lot of commercial interest. Why do you think the majority of customers like your art? I mean, you're kind of describing right now um, that the eucalyptus line, the trees, uh, the series is really very popular um, with people, you know, with people or your customers. Um, yeah. Do they let you know? Like, do they give you feedback or respond? They or? do. They, the, the main feedback I get is that it's calming and it's uh, uplifting. And then from the figurative line, which I also have, they just kind of, you know, the, everything about it is calm. It's not slapping you in the face. It's, it's just, I hate to say it, it's pretty, <laughs> you know? And I think people like the color, the, um, mm -hmm. the way the colors are not in your face. I think they react to that positively. Although I do have some more colorful um, pieces that also people, you know, have reacted positively to. I mean, I mean people, the, the main thing that I get is that it's so calming and so uplifting mm -hmm. at the same time. That's the, the mm -hmm. comments I get. Um, I also, um, you know, as part of the commercial side of it, I sell very large canvas prints. And I mean, honestly, people have big walls, they don't know what to do with them. So the big canvas prints fills the, you know, fills up their walls. Can you describe a typical uh, day or how you approach your process in the studio? Like, where do you start? What, what, how do you get from A to Z? In terms of the process, I kind of have an idea. If, if I'm doing a portrait, of course I know what I'm doing, right? Um, with figurative also, I pretty much have an idea. With the trees, I kind of let it get a little bit more creative, especially in the beginning. I had to look at the photos that I had and kind of follow because I, you know, people think trees are just straight lines and they're not. So there's a lot of bends in the trees and that, that's actually what makes it interesting. Um, but I do have uh, quite a few um, more abstract tree paintings, and those are just free flow. And what I do, uh, it's very layered. I mix the paint with water, I throw it on it, I, you know, roll the canvas around, let the water move around, let it dry, and then I do another layer, 
and then I paint on it and you know I just just go crazy with all of I you know and all the time the whole time I keep in mind that these are going to end up as abstract trees yeah. so I still keep that vertical the vertical lines in mind I know where the barks are going to end up but at the same time I let the paint do what it wants to do and and then I go over it with you know a little bit of um more deliberate um, mm -hmm. painting on the top of that and then again the ink pen comes in and I like working with uh, oil pastels because it gets, has a lot different kind of a texture and I can it gives the trees a little bit of a 3, 3D feel. It's interesting because the tension what I see in your work too I was looking at the more abstract tree marks where you're really thinking about verticality and positive and negative space. And um, there's always historically this tension between abstraction, because painting is an abstraction, even if you're painting a portrait. I mean, it's a flat surface and we're talking about yeah. dimension, three dimensions yeah. on a flat surface. So um, I've always been interested in that tension that's created between meeting a subject that the viewer can identify but also having that abstraction where they can bring their own kind of experience to it. And it seems like you've really married those two things really well. They're, they work very well in your, your paintings. Oh, uh, art fairs over the years. What are the challenges and the rewards of participating? And why did you choose to participate in the Beverly Hills Art Show? Oh, Beverly Hills is one of my favorite <laughs> art shows. I used to go there and shop there before I started painting. <laughs> So I've known about the Beverly Hills Art Show forever. And I, when I started painting, people kept saying, you know, you gotta show your art somewhere. So I applied and I got in. And honestly, I was so unprepared. It's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the organizers remember me from those days. I was just desperate. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, it was all last minute. And it, I gotta say it was one of my best, the first show I did there was one of my best shows. I, I think it's because I was new and I had this fresh perspective and there's like people buzzing around my, um, my tent and um, my booth. And uh, I did a few more arches. I've, most of my arches have been at Beverly Hills. Uh, frankly, as an artist, it's just a lot of work. It's just exhausting. Oh, yeah. So for me, it's just <laughs> difficult physical mental work but the positive side of it is you're face to face with the people who are looking at your art and you're getting that energy from them right and then you meet other artists which i yeah. love i've met a lot of great artists there yeah. so i just love the beverly hills art show. i don't do that many art shows um anymore uh, but Beverly Hills Art Show is one of the ones, it's my go-to place when I want to do an art show. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It's lovely. And it is that face-to-face -face interaction, like when I go, when I'm at an opening and, and that, that feedback and that, like you said, the energy is wonderful. Kat, yeah. do you want to talk a little yeah. bit about I can talk was... a little bit about this. This was a series of eucalyptus fragments I did. They're all 12 by 12. And they're probably the most colorful series I have. There's oranges and greens and chartreuse and all kinds of colors. And they basically all have the same technique. They all have the abstract layer at the bottom. Uh, you can see there's multiple layers of paint just basically thrown at it and then the bark is added. And then the, um, in this particular one, the purple slash pink uh, colors are um, oil pastels. And then the, um, the definition is added at the very end with the ink uh, pan. This one is in a set. Um, I had a client that found me online and they asked um, to, for me to paint these very large panels for them, uh, like seven feet tall. They had a huge house, original. You know, they just, they had a very specific. And so we worked with them. They were from central California. They lived in the woods and they wanted to replicate it inside of their home. And they fell in love with my trees. So when I did that, I thought, I want a little bit of that for myself. <laughs> 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 <Okay>. <laughs> 
So I did these, uh, this uh, set of two, um, they're not huge, they're 24 by 24. And it's the same scheme, but there's a lot of detail in these. I personally love the knots in the trees and, and this one, and uh, there's a similar one that's a set in this. And I decided to use uh, kind of more bright colors in that one as accent. This is, um, this is a set, again, as part of that colorful set of uh, eucalyptus fragments that I did. I sell them separately now, but I kind of wanted to show them in a set here. This is the, uh, from the um, figurative series. So the figurative ones, uh, if anybody wants to go look at it on my website, I don't show their faces because I want the focus to be on the body. The entire series is done from either antique photographs or family and friends. Uh, I have, I make them pose for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one is from an antique photograph that I found. And I changed it a little bit. You know, I loved how the, the it was a dancer, you know, from the twenties, and she was just holding her skirt, skirt really tight and was sitting on this chair. Um, and the rest I just kind of made up. This one, I forced my friends and family to pose for me. Uh, uh, the one on the right is my sister who looks nothing like that. She's uh, not that tall. And the guy on the left is a friend of ours. It was at a barbecue and I saw his outfit. I, I had this concept in my mind that I wanted to show a chill couple hanging out together. And um, uh, this one actually sold at my very first art show at Beverly Hills. This one is, you know, when I was telling you that I, I kind of don't like anything around the bodies. Uh, I can keep doing paintings like this all the time, you know, just have a very simple background and just keep the focus on the body, simple colors. This one is a family member who posted this on Facebook. I'm like, I like that. I'm going to paint it. <laughs> you know, what's really interesting is that um, psychologically, both in your tree, your trees and with the portraits, you, you are not giving us the top. The, oh, I the, yeah. the, the, the top, which makes me as a viewer want more, I come, keep coming back to look, you know? That's so I think it's because everybody focuses so much. Like when you look at trees, everybody looks at the branches and the leaves. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, no, you got to look at the trunks. I want you to focus on the trunk. So I just chop off the tops. Because when I walk by the tree, I'm not seeing the top, especially eucalyptus trees, as you know, they get like 40, 50 feet tall. Um, and with people, I mean, I have the portrait line, so I do portraits, but when I do figurative, the focus is on the figure, not on the face. And the way you treat the figure or the, the skin is similar because eucalyptus trees, it's like skin when you look at it sometimes. That's so you know? interesting. Yes, and I, I noticed that in your painting of your figurative work as well, that there's that same kind of treatment of the, the skin. This is my friend's daughter. She's much more grown up now. She's in college now. And um, I wanted to keep the, the colors around this one very muted and monochromatic. She's, she's a spunky kid. So... I toned her down in this, but you can still see that she's kind of got her chin up in the air and uh, feisty. And she, that was one of my earlier works. This one is my nephew who was sitting across the dinner table from me. And I said, hold that look. And that's how I got into this painting. We do have a couple of questions. Um, do you ever find other plant life that inspires inspires you to paint them like colorful succulents? I did a series of vines on, you know, vines that grow on uh, the wall. And um, I sold those out and I decided that they were too similar to each other. Mm -hmm. So I stopped painting those. I'm sure eventually I'll venture out into other kinds of plant life, but I haven't found one that kind of blows me away like the eucalyptus trees that so okay last question what or who do you like from the late 19th and 20th century art so like i said you know when you're younger it's all about the uh, 
Picasso's and the Matisse's and it's like, oh my God. And um, like I said, the works of um, Kai Bot really has influenced me, just, just not in terms of my work, but just um, there's a lot of uh, stories behind his art because he was uh, from a very well-to-do family but he was a big patron of all the artists that everybody's so familiar with, including Matisse and that whole, um, all the artists of that era. Actually for Kaibat, I love the story behind his art uh, because he was from a very rich family and um, he would paint the workers that were working in his family's home, which was absolutely sacrilege back in those days. So, I, as much as I love his art, which is just brilliant, I also like the stories behind his art. And as I said, Sheila has been like, you know, like everybody knows Klimt, right? So Klimt is awesome, pretty, all that stuff. And then you see Sheila who was um, just half a generation after Klimt in the same area in Austria and how he took, you know, Klimt's uh, figurative art and just completely deconstructed it and took a completely different angle to it. So for me, it's not just looking at the art, it's what the artist is going through, it's what their life is about, you know, it's what's behind the painting that also influences. So we are coming to a close. Is there anything else you would like to add before we end today? I just appreciate the opportunity of um, talking, of it and talking to Christina here. She's awesome. Like you said, we can keep talking for a long time. <laughs> And uh, hopefully, um, you know, next time we'll see each other face to face at the Ooh. Beverly Hills Art Show. Yeah. <laughs> great! I would love to meet you in person, and I'll, I'm going to follow your art career. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs>